हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल ऑल अबाउट इकोनॉमिक्स आई एम प्रज्ञा एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट स्लस की इक्वेशन सो लेट्स कम स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड टू द टॉपिक सो वेन एवर द प्राइस ऑफ अ गुड चेंजेस सपोज इट बिकम्स चीपर द प्राइस ऑफ अ गुड डिक्रीज इज वट हैपन्स द क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड विल इंक्रीज we know the law of demand that whenever the price uh, decreases the quantity demand increases but why does that happen look whenever the price of a good changes there are two sorts of effects first one is that the rate of uh, the rate at which you can exchange one good for another changes and the total purchasing power of your income is altered so basically there are two effects first one is substitution effect and second one is income effect the substitution effect is the effect that comes because of the change in the rate of exchange between the two goods and income effect is the effect that comes because of different purchasing power that is when your purchasing power is altered and that's why the demand has uh, decreased or increased the change is called income effect and whenever there is a change in the rate of exchange between the two goods Uh, the change in demand is due to the substitution effect so what we are going to do we are going to break the price movement into two steps first we will let the relative prices changes and will hold the purchasing power constant and in the second one we'll let the purchasing power adjust while holding the relative prices constant so let's see it through the diagram let let us take uh, on the x axis the good one and on the y axis good two and ab be the budget line so let us suppose that the price of good one has decreased so what will happen to the budget line it will rotate and uh, change to from ab to ab dash so the price of good one has decreased so therefore the demand for good one will increase and it will move towards the right and the vertical intercept will be the same because there is no change in the price of good two so the budget line has shifted uh, has been rotated from ab to ab dash now uh, what we're going to do we are going to understand this we are not going to uh, make it simply uh, rotate from ab to ab dash what we're going to do we'll first pivot the budget line and then we'll shift the budget line so pivot means basically we are letting the relative prices changes and then when the when we make the uh, budget line pivot then after that we're going to shift it upwards and that is the change in purchasing power so basically this pivot shift operation gives us a convenient way to decompose the change in demand into two pieces the first step the pivot is the movement where the slope of the budget line changes while its purchasing power stays constant and while the second step is the shift where the slope stays constant and the purchasing power changes so uh, let us properly understand this. so let us first understand the pivoted line so what's happening in the pivoted line the pivoted line is intersecting the budget line ab with the original choice that is x1 y1 so basically in the pivoted line also the original choice is just affordable so what we are doing the slope is changing the relative prices are changing but the purchasing power is constant so how does that purchasing power will be constant because obviously if the price is decreasing the purchasing power of a person will increase obviously but we are not taking that we here we are keeping the purchasing power constant so how will we do how will be doing that look uh, the basic algebraic expression of a budget line is m equals to p1 x1 plus p2 x2 and as the price has decreased from p1 to p1 dash so the money uh, in the money income will also be increased m dash so basically uh, m dash equals equals to p1 dash x1 plus p2 x2 when we will be subtracting these equations we will get m1 dash minus m equals to x1 or bracket may p1 dash minus p1 so basically change in m is equals to x1 change in p1 
so what's happening whenever the price will decrease will multiply the decrease with the quantity of the good and we'll get the amount by which the purchasing power is changing so we'll take back the amount from the consumer and the uh, purchasing power will be constant when the price will decrease because when the price will decrease the obviously change in p1 will be negative so we'll take back the money from the consumer if the price would have been increased then we'll we would have given the consumer the amount so that the purchasing power stays constant so when a price goes down a consumer's purchasing power goes up so we will have to decrease the consumer's income in order to keep purchasing power fixed so now let us come back to the diagram and see the optimal bundle that we are getting on the pivoted line let us it be y okay so let the optimal bundle be y on the pivoted line and we can see that uh, it is a uh, it is the bundle which the consumer will substitute one good for the other when the price changes but purchasing power remains constant that is basically this change from x to y is the substitution effect here the purchasing power is constant and the relative prices we have let the relative prices changes so the equation will be change in x1 s equals to x1 p1 dash m m dash minus x1 p1 m so basically the price has decreased and also the money income is changing to m dash we are taking back the money from the consumer to make the purchasing power constant so that's what this equation is telling us that substitution effect is the effect when we are Uh, making the purchasing power constant and the price is reducing the relative the change in the demand because of this is the substitution effect this equation is telling us that now we'll come to the income effect so let us come back to the diagram and see uh, that uh, suppose the last bundle the final choice we are, uh, we have is z so see from x to y we made the uh, with the choice was changing because of the substitution effect now from y to z the choice has been changed because of the income effect because the slope now here uh, is same the shift the slope is same in the shift but the purchasing power is now changing so basically the money we took back from the consumer we are giving it back to the consumer so that the purchasing power is now changing but the relative prices are same the slope is same so uh, how do we say that uh, in the equation so change in x1 n is equals to x1 p1 dash m minus x1 p1 dash m dash so basically what's happening the price is changing and the money we took back from the consumer we are giving it back to the consumer and the money now is same that is the money income was same with, uh, with from the beginning now let us understand this properly through an example we are going to calculate the substitution effect and income effect from a demand function let's see how we will be doing that so suppose that a consumer has a demand function for milk of the form x1 equals to 10 plus m upon 10 p1 and his original income is dollar 120 per week and the price of milk is dollar 3 per quart so suppose now uh, that the price has been reduced to dollar 2 per quart now how will that impact it now let's see that so basically if on the original income and on the original price what was the demand we'll just put the values into the demand function x1 will be 10 plus 120 upon 10 into 3 that is basically 14 quarts per week so this is the original demand which was on the price and income which were given now if the price has been reduced to 2 on the original income if the if we see the change what's happening this uh, 10 plus 120 upon 10 into 2 that is 16 quarts of milk that is basically now this 
is the total change that has happened we are taking the income same we are not we were we have not make the purchasing power constant or the relative prices constant we have just uh, checked out that when the price will reduce the total uh, uh, increase in the demand will be 2 quads per week that is from 14 to 16 that is the total it includes the substitution effect plus the income effect now let us divide it into both now let us first calculate the substitution effect how we calculate that look if the price of milk has been reduced to dollar 2 a quart now what we are going to do we have uh, uh, derived the uh, uh, equation that change in m equals to x1 change in p1 so now let us Uh, see what's happening here. Change in M. Let's see what how we'll calculate that. The change in P one is two minus three. New prices are two. The previous price, the original prices are three. So two minus three and X one is fourteen. The original X one, which were we, uh, which we were demanding on the uh, prices and income given were fourteen. So what has uh, so change in M has been now minus dollar fourteen. So what we'll be doing? We'll be taking back dollar fourteen from the consumer so that the purchasing power will remain constant and only the substitution effect will now uh, will be calculating. So let us change the money income. So this uh, the money income is one dollar one twenty per week. So we'll subtract fourteen from one twenty and we'll be getting. One hundred six. So this is the money. Uh, this is the money the consumer have, so that the purchasing power remains constant. So let us calculate the substitution effect by putting the value into the demand function. So now ten plus m m is now one hundred six, and the new prices are two. So therefore upon ten into two. So basically the demand now has been increased to fifteen point three. So The from the original bundle it was fourteen quads per week. Now it has become fifteen point three quads per week, and now let's see the substitution effect is basically fifteen point three minus fourteen that is one point three. So we have calculated the substitution effect that is one point three. Now calculate the income effect. So how do how are we going to calculate the income effect? It's as simple as that. That when we uh, put the uh, or straightforward only the change in price to the demanding uh, to the demand function, we got sixteen quarts of milk, and the substitution effect was fifteen point three. So the remaining effect is income effect. So we are going to subtract sixteen minus fifteen point three. We are going to do, and the value is zero point seven. That is the income effect. So basically, here the income we took back from the consumer, we gave back to him the we or uh, we make the uh, again dollar one twenty per week, and then the price were reduced to dollar two. So uh, with the same thing uh, on the demand function, ten plus one uh, twenty upon ten into two, sixteen quarts of milk, and sixteen minus fifteen point three. Zero point seven. So here, how is we calculated substitution effect and income effect from the demand function? Okay. So now let's see the sign of the substitution effect. Sign of the substitution effect is always negative because if the price increases, the demand for the good due to the substitution effect always decreases. Therefore, the substitution effect is always. Negative. Now let let us talk about the sign of the income effect. So it depends upon the whether goods is inferior or normal. Look, if the good is normal and the price has been reduced, it means the income has been increased. That means the good will now be demanded more. So with this, there is a negative effect. That is, if the price is decreasing, the good is demanded even more. Because of the increase in income, so therefore, both substitution effect and income effect in this case is negative, and therefore, the change in demand, that is the total change in demand, is negative. Now, what about if the uh, if the good is inferior? Look, if the good is inferior, then if the income of the good uh, income of the consumer increases the demand for the good will decrease so therefore there will be a positive uh, there will be a positive effect 
how look if the price of the good decreases and that means the income of a good increases so if the income is increasing in the case of inferior good the demand for the good will decrease so if the price has redu reduced the demand is also reducing and therefore there is a positive effect they both are reducing so the total change in demand here is ambitious we don't know about this whether what what is outweighing what like substitution effect is outweighing the income effect or income effect is outweighing the substitution effect the total value depends on which number is more so if the substitution effect outweighs the income effect it means the good is normal inferior good but if the income effect is outweighing the substitution effect it means the good is an different good that means it is really very very inferior good that is uh, look at this diagram first one is the given case and second one is the non given inferior good so if there is a given case then the in total income effect will outweigh the substitution effect we can see that because of the reduce in prices the uh, budget line has been rotated but uh, look at the substitution effect it is increasing but the income effect is so much uh, negative that we can see that the total change in quantity demanded is actually reducing the price has been reduced still the demand is reducing this is the given case but in the second case look at this the income the substitution effect is more the income effect is also here but it is less than the given case so here the the substitution effect changes from x to y and then income effect is from y to z and the total change is now from x to z which is which is less than the substitution effect but the quantity demanded here is still when the price is reduced it the demand is more because the substitution effect is outweighed the income effect so there is the total positive change in quantity demanded when the price is reduced the quantity demanded is increasing so here it is non given inferior good case so the slusky identity is total change in demand equals to substitution effect change plus the income effect change and we uh, discussed about the sign of the substitution effect and income effect now the last part is the rates of change we are going to make the equation in terms of rates of change so let's see so the equation is change in x1 equals to the change in x1s that is the change due to substitution effect plus change x1n that is change due to income effect now what we are doing we are taking uh, the change in x1m equals to minus change in x1n so basically the equation has been changed to x1 equals to x uh, change in x1s plus minus change in x1m then we divide each side of the identity by change in p1 we just divided all by p1 now uh, we did just derive that change in m equals to x1 change in p1 so we are going to uh, put the same in the last part of the equation that is change in x1 m upon change in p1 so change in p1 here is change in m upon x1 when we put this into the equation the equation become change in x1 upon change in p1 equals to change in x1 s upon change in p1 minus change in x1 m upon change in m x1 so this is slusky identity in terms of rates of change so this is the slusky identity in terms of rate of change with this the topic completes and i hope you understood it if you have any doubts please mention them in the comment section you can also follow us on instagram we have an uh, page with all about economics name and thank you so much